Hey guys, it's Kaylor. Welcome to the YouTube channel. This is Design Build Launch Episode 3. In today's video, we're going to be finishing our design. So we have this wireframe set up with our typography, our text in there, and our space has been decided. So what we need to do is pick our colors and add our projects with some other design elements in there to make this design pop, and we will be finished with this design. So that's what we're gonna be doing in today's video. So let's go ahead and get started. So in the last video, we left off with wireframe two. So we have our first wireframe here that we blocked everything out with. For now, I'm just gonna leave that in this document. And then we have this wireframe two. So I'm gonna select this and hit Command D to create a duplicate. And we're gonna call this design one. So I'm actually going to drag this over just a little bit further away so we have some good space to work with. So the first thing I want to do is start working in our assets panel. We already have our character styles set, so now we need some colors. So because this website is fully customizable and you probably have this content adjusted to your own, if you have your own branding, feel free to go ahead and use that. Or if you want to select your colors by hand, that is also a good idea as well. For this website, however, we're gonna be using a tool called happyhues.co. It's gonna allow us to preview a lot of different color palettes very quickly so we can find one that looks good for this project. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So this is happyhues.co. So this is a website that gives you a bunch of color palettes on the side, and as you select each one of them, it updates every aspect of this content to that exact color scheme. It also gives you some terminology, some psychology of colors, and overall just shows you how to use the color palette and can teach you a little bit about color as well. This was made by Mackenzie Child. I will have his links in the description along with happyhues.co so you guys can take a look at this and choose any of these color palettes for your design that you would like. I know I wanna go with a dark theme and there's two really good ones here. There's one with orange and this one's pretty solid, but I want one that has a lot of darker shaded sections, which I don't think this one has. It looks like it's just this dark color and white, which I don't know if I wanna do that kind of contrast. So I'm gonna go with probably this one because I really like the purple and the green is kind of the secondary color there. That's really nice or even tertiary as it's labeled here. So that's really cool. So this website gives you these sections down here at the bottom to tell you exactly what was used in each of these sections and how to use it if you'd like to follow this as a guide. So that is really cool. So for example, we could use this as our background color, this black. And then for our footer, since it's a full block like this, we could use this gray color, which I think we'll be doing. So I'm gonna turn off the color palette and I'm gonna go back to Adobe XD and we're gonna start to import some of these colors. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in here and in the pasteboard up here, I'm just gonna grab a rectangle and drag out a square. I'm gonna remove the border, hit repeat grid, and just drag out some swatches here just to make the importing of these colors just a little bit easier. So I'm gonna head back over to Happy Hues. And once I'm here, I know I want this background color, so I'm just gonna copy that. And back here in Adobe XD, I'm going to paste that color into this rectangle. And I'm gonna go back and forth doing that. I have a ultra wide monitor, so I'm gonna throw happy hues up over here on the right and just go back and forth copying these into this document. All right, so these are the colors we're gonna be using. There's six of them. Um, I'm using the darkest black, which is 16161A, a slightly lighter one, which is 242629, a gray color, which is 94A1B2. This purple is 7F5AF0, and the green is 2CB67D. And for the white, I actually have mine set to uh, six Fs here, but I'm actually gonna change this last one to E, which is exactly what is used in the palette over here. So not a whole lot of change there, but I am gonna use exactly what's used there. So I'm gonna select all of these and just hit the plus to add these over here. And the darkest color black, I like to have up top followed by the lighter shade. That way I can keep track of which one they are because it's really hard to see that with those being that small. Then I'll get my gray there. So we're going from darkest to lightest. And then we have our main color and this is gonna be our secondary and then our just overall white color. So once we have that, we're just going to delete those squares. So based on how these were used in Happy Hues and how I would like to use them, I'm gonna go ahead and start applying these to the website. So the first thing I wanna do is select the artboard and set that fill to the darkest black color we're using. And then for all of the text, I'm gonna select all of it here that I can see, and I'm gonna set this to the gray color for now. I'm gonna go through and update that for all of the text on the website. 
even setting that down here in this footer section. I'm gonna unlock our rectangle and I'm going to set this to our lighter shade of gray and then I'm gonna hit Command L again to relock that just so when we're working with these elements later, we don't drag that away. So now that we have the background of our website decided and we're using this gray as our paragraph text, so that's why I applied it to everything. So now I'm going to start changing the headings and the buttons. So first off, we'll just go from the hero section down. I want my logo to be white and I'm also gonna add a bit of color there by just setting that period to purple. And since we have a button here, we're gonna set that to purple, which is our primary color and our heading to our white. Scrolling down, since we have that white heading here, I might change this to white, but for now I'm gonna leave it to the paragraph text because it is bold and large, so it does separate itself pretty well there. For these, I am going to set these to purple and I want the consulting to be a different color because I'm counting that as kind of a, a different service. So if you had design and code or photography and something else, you could you know do purple or whatever color and then another one. I think that looks pretty cool. I'm gonna leave this one as well for now. And then we have a button here. This is kind of a secondary button. It's taking us away from the website. So I'm gonna call that a secondary and I'm gonna change that one to green. Our about section looks good. And then down here at the bottom, we have one more link and that is gonna be a primary contact link. So we're gonna make that purple. I'm not liking this gray on this background. So I'm gonna to try to set that to white. And then doing so, we'll try the about me and white. I think that looks better. And one thing I am noticing here, let me turn on my layout really quickly. We have not a lot of gap here. If you look at the about, we have at least one column, a little bit more. So I think I'm gonna change that here and I'm just gonna select all of these and just shift them over one column. And I think that looks a lot better, filling out more of this side of the page and giving it some breathing room here between the headings. So, Small change there, and then I'm just gonna turn off the layout again. I'm gonna grab these two H2s and change them to white and just see how that looks visually by zooming out here. I think I'm gonna undo that and leave them at gray for now. We might change that later on, but for now that's fine. And just because we have this harsh contrast, I'm gonna select these rectangles and set them to the lighter shade of black that we're using just so they don't stand out so much in this dark theme. Same thing goes down here. I'm gonna select these rectangles and actually I'm gonna change them to the darker shade since we're using that lighter in the background there. For these cards, we need these headings to be a color and I'm gonna try the white color just to get some separation between that and its body text there. That's looking good. And we do have these icon placeholders, so let's go ahead and add those in so that we can just finish this up while we're working on these. For the two icons that I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna be using box icons. So you can go to boxicons.com to get these and download this. I'm gonna be dragging in a user profile and for now, I'll set that to white so we can see it. And I'm gonna be dragging in this square icon. I really like the shape of that. So we're gonna use that for design concept because it kind of looks creative. So what I like to do with my icons is put a square around them that is 0% opacity. That way it's better to align them for spacing. So I'm gonna put this to 24 by 24, remove the border, select both of them and center align them together. And then I'm gonna select that square and then turn the opacity off. Grab both of them, Command G to group them. And then I'll do that one more time for this one over here. Center them together, select the square, remove the opacity, and Command G to group. For these placeholders, we're using 36, so I'm just gonna select that grouping Make sure responsive resize is turned off. I'm gonna lock the aspect ratio and bump that up to 36. And I'll repeat that on both of them. Scaling those up and we'll just drag those into position. And I will remove the squares behind them. So I'm just clicking and dragging. With all that selected, I'm holding shift, selecting the card to deselect it and then holding shift once more and deselecting the icon on top. So that leaves me with that gray square in the background and I'm just going to delete that. So if I select one of these, we still have that 20, 20 spacing in each of the corners. So I'm gonna select both these icons and change them to our primary color, which is purple. And we have some nice looking cards. 
So before we add any more details to this design, I want to add in my projects. So I'm gonna do that with you guys with one of them and I'll speed up the process for the rest of them. Again, you can put anything here you want. You can change the size of these cards and images, but since we have this rectangle this size, I'm going to adjust my images that I'm gonna place in here to that size exactly. So I'm gonna hold Alt to copy this. I'm gonna hit A on the keyboard to grab the artboard tool and I'm just gonna drag out an artboard that is the exact same size as this rectangle, which is 496 by 629, and the artboard matches that, so that's good. So I'm just gonna leave this here in the pasteboard. I'm gonna call this card one. So for each one of these cards, I want them to have a nice background. So what I'm gonna do is I have these screenshots that I've taken of these Adobe XD artboards. You can even use mockups. It's probably better if you do. Uh, but since these are gonna be very opaque, I just took screenshots of random stuff and I'm going to rotate these at like a 30 to 45 degree angle, probably 30 actually. And I'm gonna drag this artboard over just so we can put that there. And I'm gonna scale these down a little bit. And then I'm going to grab that rectangle that's in the back there, Command Shift, right square bracket key to bring that to the front. And I'm gonna set this to purple. And then I'm just going to lower the opacity on this until I can see enough of that, like that. So I'm gonna grab one of these headings and just drag it over. Just so we can see what this looks like, I'm gonna center it up in there and change that to white. So that will be one of our cards. Since we have this image, I'm gonna grab that rectangle, Command C, Command V to create a copy or Command D to duplicate one on top. And I'm going to set this to white, select everything, accept that text, Command Shift M to mask with shape. So I basically just crop this into a card like that. And when we have that, I'll just drag a duplicate of that over, put it into the artboard here, Command Shift, left square bracket key, we'll send it all the way to the back and delete the placeholder. And then we can change the text to white. Just like that, we have a nice looking card for our web design. And that's the process I'm going to take for the rest of these cards here, just using different colors for each one of the cards. That's probably not the process I would take if I was gonna make this an actual website, meaning that this was gonna be my portfolio piece, my main website. I'd take a little bit more time, maybe mock these up a little bit. And again, you can always create these in something else and just drag an image in and drop it into that square and then just change this to white and then you're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that process though to get some cards in here and then we'll move on. So I've changed the cards over and now I'm here in the live preview and I'm just making sure everything looks pretty good here. So as it stands right now, this website's coming along pretty good. We just need a few things in here to make this pop a little bit more. And to do that, I want to use some kind of geometric shapes uh, that look kind of modern and match this theme a lot. So what I'm gonna do is here in the hero area, I'm gonna start drawing some lines down here on the bottom corner and see how that is starting to look. So let's grab the pen tool. And I think I'm just gonna do a line like that. And then we'll try size two and then we'll right click on this gray and apply as border. And we can't repeat grid on this because if we do that, it's just gonna do this, uh, which I don't want. We might be able to get away with it by shrinking this into the negatives a lot. Oh, we can, okay, that'll work, perfect. So I'm just gonna do that and drag down somewhere like that. Maybe slide this whole grouping up. And then I think I'm gonna ungroup that now. So we have each one of these individual lines and I'm gonna go in and just double click to edit the line and add points like this and just add some deviation to them and just kind of make them a little unique, adjusting the handles a little bit. Just kind of giving them a little bit of a not so perfect line shape. And if you accidentally add a point and then you double click on it, it'll remove the anchors. You can just double click on that point again to add them back in there. So I just have some variations in the lines. They're just kind of swooping, I guess you could say. Uh, down here at the bottom, I have some that I didn't touch, but I think that's because I want to crop these out with a shape. So I'm gonna grab a circle and I'm just gonna hold shift and drag one out. And I'm gonna get a good size one. So around 550 will do. 
And I'm just gonna lower the opacity so we can see through this. And I'm gonna select an area of this with some good variation in it. Somewhere like that. And then I'm just going to make sure I select all the lines and that shape and hit Command Shift M. And since that circle is on top, it's going to mask that out like so. And so that's really visible. So what I'm gonna do is go into the layer panel and I'm gonna select the mask and I'm gonna grab all of these paths and I'm gonna bump them down to one pixel. And then I'm gonna copy this, paste a duplicate on top of it and just drag it over here. And I'm gonna hold Shift and Alt and scale this down to around 280. And then we'll just rotate this so that these lines are kind of crossing here. And then we'll just align these together somehow. So kind of having them intersect maybe like that. And then what I want to do is I want to go back into my assets panel, right click, apply as border on the purple color. So we have that going on. And I want to send this gray one in the back. So command shift left square bracket key. We'll make sure that purple one there is on top of that. We might select this one and just modify the gray color. So again, I'm gonna select all the paths inside of that grouping. And then I'm going to drag that gray down to a little bit more of an opaque kind of gray so it's not so visible, just to make it a little darker there. And you can feel free to add that to the color swatches if you'd like, but since we're only gonna be using it in this, I'm gonna leave that how that is. So now that we have both of these, I'm just going to drag them into a good position visually. Kind of fill this area out a little bit. Maybe drag this one up and over a bit. And I want some overlap here with the text. And with both of that, you can either leave this going over top of the text like that. That's kind of cool. But I'm going to put mine in the back with Command Shift Left Square Bracket Key. So it's not interfering with the heading at all. Let's go to Live Preview and take a look at that. And now that we have this, what we can do is copy this and just place this throughout the design to kind of split up some sections where there's just a lot of black in the background. So I'm gonna grab this, hold Alt and drag down. And I'm gonna put it in between these two cards and I'm going to rotate it so I get a good pattern at a good angle. So something like that. And I'm gonna make sure that's in the back with Command Shift, left square bracket key. So as we scroll down, that gives us a nice little detail to have there. And then down here at the bottom, I wanna have something here cause we got a lot of empty space there. So I'm gonna grab the original one up here. So both of them, hold Alt and drag duplicates down. Command Shift, right square bracket key will bring them all the way to the front. And I kinda want them in a similar position as they are up top, but I wanna break up this line. So I'm gonna drag this one just somewhere around there and let's rotate this. And what I want to do is I want to apply our green color to this one. So right click on that swatch, apply as border. And then with this one, I'm going to right click on the purple, apply as border. So then now we're using both our secondary and primary there. So I'm going to save that up. I'm going to select this, go to the prototype tab and make sure this is set to our home. And also these links should be sticky. So we've already selected all those and fixed their position. If you haven't, just make sure that is good to go. And then we can hit the live preview button. And as we scroll down, you'll see those stick. Everything is nice and colorful. Our projects are in here nicely. We got some details in the background to split up that background color. And down here at the bottom, we have a nice call to action. And this slides in to meet that really nicely. So with that, we have finished this design and we are ready to start building this website. And we're gonna do exactly that in episode four. So I hope to see you guys in episode four. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that video when it releases. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one.